The vertebral artery runs in a specially made channel in the holes of the transverse processes of the vertebrae, which are neatly arranged one above the other. And the vertebral artery, here it enters this hole of one of the lower cervical vertebrae and goes up in this channel, which is formed by the hole of the transverse processes of the vertebrae. Then it makes a bend. Right here it makes a bend in a special groove of the first vertebra and enters the skull cavity into the skull cavity through this large occipital hole. Further, these arteries connect, and here in the brain itself, this hole is formed. And here a branched network of arterial vessels is formed in such a way that they all compensate each other. If the blood supply is disrupted in one vessel, it can be compensated by another vessel. The vertebral artery system, the common carotid artery system. Vertebral artery syndrome develops when there is a disruption in the blood supply in the system of this artery. There could be several variants. There could be compression of the vertebral artery. There could be irritation, entanglement of the vertebral artery, reflex spasm of it. There could be atherosclerosis of these arteries. It's less common. It's not as common as atherosclerosis of the carotid arteries. Here, it's usually mechanical compression or irritation. The entanglement of this artery causes all the symptoms that are associated with vertebral artery syndrome. There are several levels of compression where this artery can be squeezed. Most often, it happens in the canal itself. In this very canal, the artery is squeezed either due to osteoarthritis of these joints, they grow and start to scratch the artery itself, or due to instability when the vertebra is loose, due to functional blocks of subluxations, that is, the position of the vertebrae itself slightly changes. It gets fixed in the wrong position, and with further movement, starts to irritate the artery. But all this mainly happens due to irritation, entanglement, and as a result, a reflex spasm of the artery occurs. And most often, even these cases, they are frequent, of course, but the most common case where compression of the vertebral artery occurs is right here. It's in the bend, where it bends, where the short neck extensors also pass and straining, increasing in volume these muscles, because very often they are not just strained, not just excessively overloaded, but also often happens that they are hypertrophied. The heaviest load on them occurs if the long neck extensors do not work and the short neck extensors are forced to perform the function of these huge muscles, which are very often the thickness of a soap bubble wall or a cellophane bag, which has been washed three times and hung up to dry, and it is no longer good for anything. It's been dried three times, washed, such a thin wall, you put it there, pour potatoes into it, and it tears right before your eyes. That's the same thickness your neck extensor becomes. But the strongest become even stronger, Short neck extensors increase in volume. They become as thick as a big toe. And of course, they start to compress everything there, including the vertebral artery and the gatekeeper nerves. And all this causes symptoms, which we will talk about now. The levels at which the vertebral artery can be compressed can be irritated. The first is before the vertebral artery enters the canal of the transverse processes of the vertebrae. But in this case, it only happens when there is a developmental anomaly. Either it's an additional cervical rib, which is very rare, or it's an atypical departure of the vertebral artery itself from the spine. Here is the subclavian artery. Then it begins to be compressed by the shortened anterior scalene muscle. Or in the extreme position, during turns for example, irritation of the artery occurs. But this case is very rare. Two other levels of vertebral artery compression, they of course occur much more often. And all vertebral artery syndromes, they are specifically associated with compression at these two levels. The first is within the channel of the transverse processes of the vertebrae. And the second is in the area of the extreme vertebral transition. This is the place between the first vertebra, the occipital bone, and also between the second and first cervical vertebrae. Inside the transverse processes of the vertebrae, the vertebral artery passes through its canal. And here it can be irritated, compressed, most often due to subluxations, due to functional blocks, which irritate the artery wall itself during movement and cause a reflex spasm. Most often it is a reflex spasm that occurs, which leads to irritation of the nerve plexus of the artery. And because of this, all symptoms arise, starting from a headache, 
ending with the angle of the surroundings, noise in the ears. Very often, even on ultrasound, they do Doppler ultrasound, ultrasound diagnostics, to identify the level of compression, how strong it is and what it is. That is, whether there is no atherosclerosis, whether there are no changes themselves. Very often during ultrasound diagnostics, they do not detect compression of the vertebral artery. Despite appearances, the person is dealing with issues like headaches and ear noise. All the symptoms associated with vertebral artery syndrome are there, but everything is fine on the ultrasound. In this case, it is necessary to additionally conduct it is necessary to additionally check the condition of the vessels during turns, tilts, bending and unbending, and most importantly, in the position in which these symptoms are most pronounced. That is, for example, if a person says that he feels worse when he, for example, lowers his head forward or turns it to the right, in this case, the noise intensifies for him. And in this position, you need to do an ultrasound, and in this position, you need to check the condition of the vessels. The condition of the vertebral arteries not just lying down when his head is not spinning and everything is in the most comfortable state for him. Very often they do an ultrasound in such a comfortable state lying down. Everything is fine. But when turning, compression occurs and it is precisely it that manifests itself is determined by the pressure of the vertebral artery. In addition to subluxations, very often the pressure occurs due to osteoarthritis of the intervertebral joints. That is, when there is bone growth and they start to touch, they start to scratch the vertebral artery in certain positions as well. And very rarely, but such cases are described in the literature, it happens with the pressure of the vertebral artery by a hernia, but this happens very rarely. Less frequent than the previous two, subluxation and joint osteoarthritis. And still the most common, the most common place where the vertebral artery is compressed is precisely the area of the so-called extreme vertebral transition. This is the place where the well-known, beloved by all of you, short neck extensors are located. They compress the vertebral artery and along with it, the occipital nerve, the suboccipital nerve, causing a huge number of unpleasant symptoms, starting from headaches, ending with noise in the ears, dizziness, Still, the most common cause of vertebral artery syndrome from my practice. Compression right in this place. Most often, there is a spasm of the lower oblique muscle. That is, there are several muscles, short extensors, formed by several muscles. But anatomically, it is arranged that it is specifically the lower oblique muscle. It is capable during its spasm in adult muscles. Hypertrophy to most strongly affect the vertebral artery itself, for example. It is said about Kimmerl's anomalies, for example. Yes, that is, there is a Kimmerl's anomaly in which the groove that the vertebral artery passes through the first vertebra is also covered from above, not by a ligament as in the norm, yes as if it is in such a channel and it is described in the literature that this Kimmerl's anomaly is another factor that can cause vertebral artery syndrome. But from my practice, I do not observe that a larger number of these manifestations of irritation of the vertebral artery occurs precisely in the lymphatic drainage artery. People with Kimmerl's anomaly usually do not have this. It is usually just such a random finding during radiological examination. There is no such thing that if a person has a full or incomplete Kimmerl's anomaly, it will manifest itself in any case. The most interesting thing is that most people have vertebral syndrome. Arteries do not have this Kimmerl's anomaly, exactly from my practice. That is, there is no such thing that if a person has this anomaly, it will somehow manifest itself. I did not observe this. For treatment, first of all, of course, it is necessary to restore the long extensors of the neck. But very often this is not enough. Very often it is still necessary to affect the arteries themselves. Extensors, there are a lot of painful trigger points. When affected, the pain radiates to the head, arm, and eye. 
It may also be necessary to eliminate trigger points in the upper trapezius. It is also necessary in the muscle that lifts the scapula. That is, in practice, in addition to, for example, fighting with the back, that is, during VU. Fibrosis fibucci is very level to eliminate. And the most interesting thing is that headaches are often caused not only by the spasm of the shortest extensors, but also trigger points are found in places and close to the places of attachment of the occipital bone. That is, the longest extensors of the neck are found very powerful. Such trigger zones, most often, this is exactly in the area of attachments to the occipital bone, which cause, among other things, mediation of influence on the vertebral artery itself, manifestations of vertebral artery syndrome. They are associated precisely with the fact that this artery supplies blood. These can be infarctions and infarctions and infarctions and infarctions and infarctions and infarctions and infarctions, and infarctions visual disturbances. These can be hearing loss noise in the ears and dizziness and, of course, headaches. But the most common manifestation is headache and dizziness. Well, from experience, I can say that the impact specifically on this zone of the extreme vertebral transition restoration of mobility of the first vertebra elimination of trigger points in the area of the longest extensors in the area of the upper trapezius muscle lifting the scapula. This really improves the inflow outflow of blood. And the most interesting thing is that very often these patients suffering from vertebral artery syndrome do not help or after some time stop helping vascular therapy and even sometimes happens that the intake of vascular drugs on the contrary enhances dizziness, reduces, and headache enhances. This is most often associated with the fact that you have blood flow is enhanced, outflow is disrupted, because there is a spasm of certain muscles. Other muscles are not in tone, and blood flow has improved, but the blood is still bad, and apparently intracranial. Pressure increases, by the way. Very often, the most interesting thing happens that during recovery. Well, when eliminating the compression of the vertebral artery, it normalizes, and the overall arterial pressure also happens. There is an assumption that the vertebral artery to some extent affects visual acuity, including, here is my own experience. I will tell you now such when I studied at the last courses of the Institute already. Then I was engaged in manual. If a pog trans impresses today, I'll have one less. And the most interesting thing is that it deteriorated in such a twilight state of the day when the sun was shining brightly. It seemed like everything was seen well when such a twilight, not twilight, does a, when it's not night yet. It hasn't come yet. Such a twilight state. It somehow noticeably, the clarity was lost. And since I saw worse exactly in the twilight state of the day, Yes, I took a table with these letters, sat and looked at these lines. I, for example, saw one line clearly. And below it, the letters somehow blurred, and I did this exactly in such a twilight with poor lighting. But at a certain distance, I put this table, looked, looked, looked after some time. That is, these letters became clear. This is the first thing I did, then I moved to the line below somewhere. Ten minutes, probably, this is the first thing I did. Second, I worked with the muscles themselves, short neck extensors, and I eliminated all the trigger points. That is, this place is just the most maximum compression of the vertebral artery. That is, I worked out all these places, eliminated trigger points, eliminated muscle shortening and massaged this area, and including the attachment zone of the long neck extensors of the occipital bone here. And also, I did an exercise for the eyes. This is the simplest exercise I did. That is, it's just with open and closed eyes. 
on eye movement to one side, the other side, to the right, and up, down. That is, you will do this exercise about a noticeable example, that to one side in this, you look turn more freely and to the other side, it is a little limited based on this, that is, what movements do more, some less up, down, right, left, and at an angle to one other side, this exercise they also allow to improve the nutrition of the eyeball itself and bring the eye muscles motor into tone or on the contrary remove their excessive tone excessive tension here and another exercise that i did this is i went to study on a trolley bus sat there or stood and here in front of me was suppose there here i sit in front of me sits another person means on the chair i look at him in the back of the head then a little further, then even further. That is this simplest exercise, which is just aimed at training. Muscles inside the eyes and eye moving here. In about a month, I set the vision to one and also parallel. But I took their multivitamins, vitamins, a, a. Here, this complex impact it allowed me to restore about. But probably for a month, vision to one which here so far already 10 years or more, more than 10 years, more than 10 years, 15, probably years already. So keep that as some time I did exercise more to them, did not have to resort, but we periodically do still need to. Here that is also among other things as an auxiliary method of recovery. Even better vision to use an impact on the vertebral artery itself. Well, from practice, what else can I say that in some cases, in some cases, it depends on age. It depends on the duration of the disease. As for dizziness, dizziness passes faster in some cases, slower in others. In some cases, for example, a person had dizziness for five years and they pass after the first day of treatment. And in some cases, it takes several months. But in most cases, in 9 out of 10, it may look like Avis Lochnicast 117 D-Force Rack. For Ihachi immense abuse, southern brake flyby out of Ukraine, like Tiller Eyes. Dizziness becomes less or completely passes during the first week of treatment when you eliminate the level of compression. And as a rule, when the disease is already chronic, there is no one level of compression. You have to do all this together. And often, all this is exacerbated by the reflex spasm of the upper trapezius muscle. You raise the scapula along with this, it is still necessary to restore the tone of the muscles that fix the scapula. This is the lower middle trapezius. And in order to do this, you need to check all the gluteal muscles. For example, if there are any violations in this way, I affect all this complexly, restores the movement of the intervertebral joints, removes functional blocks, improving the function, Elasticity of the muscles themselves eliminates their trigger points so that the muscles can fully work again so that they become healthy again to improve the nutrition of the muscles and the blood flow to the muscles themselves. This is such a complex effect. And also after this, after the mechanical compression has been eliminated, vascular drugs also work very well. All this in combination gives a stable result that dizziness, Headaches, they stop bothering a person with headaches. Headaches, they are specifically related to. Vertebral artery syndrome, they usually pass even faster than dizziness. What's dangerous is that there are some cases when people create for themselves problems when they start doing exercises exercises with damaged muscles. You can move on to muscle training exercises when you have restored the muscle. When the muscle is healthy, it can be trained. When the muscle is damaged, the load can intensify the injury. Therefore, before training a muscle, it is necessary to restore its innervation. It is necessary to restore the mobility of the joint where the muscle is attached. The muscles are there for a reason. You need to move the joint. You need to restore its mobility so that it moves in full in the necessary volume. Eliminate trigger points in the muscles so that there are no seals there. Eliminate the adhesion process, fibrosis, all this when done. 
you can move on to muscle training, then the training will give a result. If you do not do all this, training will only worsen the condition. Well, we talked about the vertebral artery syndrome, that's all, dear friends, until we meet again.